Hi, I'm Beth Shea, and I'm the Onboarding Training Specialist at Southland Learning. Thanks for joining me today. First, a little bit about the company. Sapling Learning is a learning management system. It was founded to improve STEM education. For the first 10 years, Sapling Learning was only in the higher ed division, and we have a presence in higher ed across the United States and in Canada. For high school, we've been in Texas for about two and a half years, and we're now in over 200 districts throughout Texas. Um, and for high school, our focus is really on science. We are starting to build a math product, but that's in its early stages right now. Um, again, we are we're based here in Austin, Texas, so made in Texas for Texas high schools and focused on STEM courses. The courses provide 100% coverage of the TEKS. That uh, biology course is still going to be aligned to the STAR test. The courses offer rigorous content. The great thing about Sapling Learning is that the questions give targeted feedback for the students. And what that means is when a student answers a question, incorrectly, they're getting targeted feedback based on that incorrect answer. It's almost like having a tutor there with them, walking them through it. So we're not spoon feeding them the answers, we're not giving them the answers, we're giving them information to think about the content and try the question again. The courses are completely web-based, so the teachers have their own logins, students have their own logins, and they can access it anywhere they have a computer with internet access. And the courses come out of the box ready to go. You really don't have to do anything to them. Um, you could literally just pass out the logins and start checking the grades. But if you wanted to, there are a lot of options for customization. And another great thing about Sapling is that the grades auto-populate. And what that means is that you can see in real time how your students are doing and maybe who's struggling and needs some help on an activity. The site is very intuitive and easy to use. We have a great teacher help page with lots of screenshots, videos, and helpful information. But if you ever need extra help throughout the year, you have a tech TA assigned to you. And your tech TA is the person that you can reach out to all year long for any help that you need with your Sapling Learning course. Um, it'll either be Hope Miller, Caitlin Grayson's, or Doug Lawson, um, depending on who you're assigned to. So now we're going to look at the site. When you go to log in, you're going to want to go to hs.saplinglearning.com. You can go to www.saplinglearning.com. That's the site for our higher ed page. From there, you need to click on the high school tab to enter the high school site. But the easiest and clearest way for you and your students is just hs.saplinglearning.com. From there, you're going to want to put in your username and password to log in. And when you get into your course, it's going to look something like this. So the first thing I'm going to do is scroll down and go over the major instructional components of the course. So within each reporting category, for each TEK, you have a presentation, a power lesson, and a study sheet. The presentation is a PowerPoint presentation on that TEK. The power lesson is the same as the presentation, it's just a video version of that presentation with voiceover underneath. The study sheet is one to two pages of really good notes on that TEK. So the first thing that we'll look at is the presentation. When you click on a presentation, that PowerPoint presentation is going to download to your computer. When you open up your presentation, it'll look something like this. When you go through the presentations, you'll see they all come with slides, really great images. They also all have lecture notes. This is a really helpful tool if, let's say, you have a student who's absent one day and needs to go back and review this content. You can have them do that at any time um, using the presentations. You might also want to use this for a sub. Um, the the uh, lecture notes really walk through this content, so if maybe your sub is not um, an expert in your content area and your subject, they can use these lecture notes to kind of walk them through the content. I mean, these are always available to you and your students. And another great thing about our presentations is that they're customizable. So if you decide that you want to add some content or remove some content, you can certainly do that. You could edit the slides, you can edit the lecture notes, then you just save it and re-upload it to your course. So that's the first piece, which again is the presentation. The next piece is the power lesson. 
And again, the power lesson is a video version of the presentation with voiceover underneath. So we'll take a look at that. Prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. After this lesson, you will be able to compare and contrast prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. All living cells can be divided into two groups. Prokaryotic cells are simple cells. These cells can be single-celled organisms such as bacteria and blue-green algae. Eukaryotic cells are more complex. Eukaryotic cells can be single-celled organisms such as protists or compose multicellular organisms such as humans. All multicellular organisms are composed of eukaryotic cells. The major difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells is that eukaryotes contain a well-defined nucleus surrounded by a nuclear membrane, while prokaryotes do not. Eukaryotes also contain membrane-bound organelles that have specialized functions. Prokaryotes do not have these specialized organelles. So that's an example of one of the power lessons. Again, the power lesson is the same as the presentation. It's just a video version of it with voiceover underneath. So you really have two different tools that cater to two different kinds of learners. Um, you could use the power lessons, uh, again, for that student who's absent one day and needs to review that content. You might want to flip your classroom with the power lessons. A lot of flexibility on how you want to implement those in your room. Um, and the next component is the study sheets. And the study sheets are one to two pages of really good notes on that TEK. So these are all PDFs. Um, you can download these. You could make a packet of these and print them out for your students. Your students can print them on your own. Um, but when you click on the study sheet, um, it's going to open up for you. We'll take a look at a study sheet. So this is one of the study sheets. If you go through it, you'll see again, it's one to two pages of really good notes on that TEK. The next two components cater to Spanish-speaking ELL students, if that's part of your student population. The first is a Spanish-English vocabulary study sheet. This offers translation of key terms. Um, and the next is a correlating activity that goes along with that. Anytime you're looking at your course and you see a little green leaf, anytime you're through your course you see a little green leaf, that's always going to indicate an activity. And as a teacher, when the teacher clicks on an activity, what opens up for them is called the activity editor. This page looks a little bit like iTunes. I can see all of the questions here in my activity. There's one question for each row. From this page, I could set an available from and a due date for this activity. So an available from date would lock the students out until that date. So I can click on this little checkbox, and when I do that, I'll see that a calendar opens up. I can click on my little calendar icon, and I can select the date and even the time when I want this activity to become available. So it's locking the students out until that date. It won't be available to, to them until that date. And um, then when I'm finished selecting that date and even the time, I can select my little save icon here. Next to the due date, by the same token, click on my little checkbox, then I can click on my calendar and select the date when I want my students to have this activity finished by. Um, you don't have to set an available from date. If you just want the students to have it available now and give them a due date, you can also just do that. Select that date and that time if you choose and then click save. From this page, I can also preview any of the questions in my activity. So to preview a question, I can highlight the row and then click on my little preview icon here, which has a little magnifying glass or I can simply double click on the row of the question I'd like to view. And when I do that, the questions open, question opens up and I can see it just the way a student sees it when a student uh, clicks on the question. So <clears throat> here I have a multiple choice question. I can go ahead and certainly if you have time as a teacher to go through these and, and go through all the feedback, we do encourage you to do that. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and select an answer and then I click check answer. And when I click check answer, I have it incorrect. So I'm getting targeted feedback based on that incorrect answer. So the student can read the feedback, think about it, and then try the question again. So I'm going to come down here and click try again. So every time the student answers the question incorrectly, 
they're going to lose 5% of the possible score for that question for every incorrect attempt. But at this point, we're not assessing them. We're still working on how well we've learned this content. So the students do have the option to read that feedback and try the question again. So now I'm going to go ahead and select a different answer. I'll click check answer. Again, I have it incorrect. And now I'm getting di different targeted feedback because I have a different incorrect answer. So again, we're not spoon feeding them. We're not giving them the answer. Just giving them information to think about the question and then try it again. The student also has the option to give up and view solution. If they give up and view solution, they'll get zero points for that question and they get a little warning here letting them know that. So again, I can click try again. Again, just losing 5% of the possible score for that question for every incorrect attempt. So those are the skill builders questions. And that's the next major um, instructional component in your course. So again, the students uh, begin learning the content with the presentation, learning and or reinforcing it with the power lesson, reviewing it with the study sheet. Then they work on how well they know that content with the skill builders. And again, those skill builders are the questions that give that targeted feedback. Finally, the students can work on the assessors. And the assessors work as an exit quiz for that TEEK. If you click on the assessors to preview an assessor question, you'll see that these questions are not going to give the students the option to give up and view solution or to try again. So again, I clicked on an activity as a teacher, so my activity editor opens up. I'm going to double click on the row of a question to preview it. I'm seeing it just the way my student sees it now. Um, and so this, again, is an assessor question. It's built like a test question. It's not giving me those options to try again or to give up and view solution. So those are the major instructional components of your course. The student learns the content with a presentation and power lesson, reviews it with the study sheet, works on how well they know that content with the skill builders, getting that targeted feedback, and finally, assessing how well they've learned that content with the assessors, which act as an exit quiz for that TEEK. I'm going to scroll up to the top of the page now. And on the top right-hand side, you'll see upcoming events. Under upcoming events, any activities that you have given a due date for that are due within the next two weeks show up here under upcoming events. There's also a link they can click on, and the students can go directly to that activity that's coming up that's due. A little further down the page, you'll see quick course links. All of your content is built into this one main page. You can just scroll through it. You're not jumping to different pages. But if you wanted to get to some content a little more quickly, you can use these quick course links and jump to the pre-assessments or the practice exams or the reporting category that you'd like to look at. A little further down, we have the student resources, the student FAQs, and video intro. These are a great thing to have your students watch uh, and read through on their first day or first week using Southland Learning. Gives them some information about the program. Another great thing is this activity, which is practice using Southland Learning. This activity lets the students know how the program works and how the questions are graded. A little further down, we've got the teacher resources, and in the middle of the teacher resources, you'll see the teacher help page. If you click on the teacher help page, um, that page will open up for you. Here on the right-hand side, you'll see there's several different help topics. I can click on this little plus sign to drill down um, and see more detailed um, topics here. Lots of great information with screenshots. Um, in the middle of the page with the new teacher corner, we have an online training video series, which you can watch at any time. Um, these are broken down into getting started, course overview, uh, the activity editor, how to hide and show pieces of your course, and adding resources. Um, and so all of this information is available to you, but if ever you needed more help, of course you would just reach out to your tech TA. Um, and your tech TA can walk you through any questions that you're having or maybe any issues you're having with your course. So looking now on the left-hand side, um, the first icon we have here is activities and due dates. If you click on activities and due dates, 
you'll see all of the activities that are in your course here. So from this page, you could set an available from and due date for any activity in your course. Again, I, I find the activity and I just check on my little um, checkbox for available from and I can click on the date on the calendar when I want that activity to become available. And then I can do the same thing with my due date here. So if you wanted to set several available from and due dates all at the same time, this is a convenient way to do that. Um, and that's that first, um, first icon on the top left, which is activities and due dates. Underneath that, we have discussion forums. You can create as many forums for your class as you'd like. Um, underneath that, we have resources. So all of your resources are placed throughout the page. They're also here in the resources tab. Additionally, any of your own resources that you uploaded would also be here in the resources tab. So you're welcome to upload a syllabus or additional handouts or any additional materials that you want your students to have available through your sapling page. You're more than welcome to upload them. They'll be placed wherever you put them on the page and they'd also be here in resources. Another helpful tool here on the left hand side is course management. If you hover over course management and click on participants, you're going to see all of the students enrolled in your class. So here I can see my students' names, I can see their usernames, I can see when they last accessed the course. I could even remove a student from my course here. So if a student drops the course completely, I can click remove to take that student out of the course. I could also reset a student's password here. Um, if they forgot it, you know, you don't have to call us. You could reset it for them here on the fly. Um, it defaults to this um, default password, but you can edit that to be whatever you'd like it to be. Um, and if you'd rather that your tech TA do this for you, we'd be more than happy to remove students or reset passwords. And again, that's on the left-hand side. That's your course management tool, and I hovered over participants. So the middle of the page has all of your course contents. Anytime you see gray text throughout your course, that indicates teacher notes. So the students don't see the gray text. That's hidden from student view. If you wanted to look at your course and see it exactly the way a student sees it, there's a little drop down menu here which says switch role to. I can click on that and select students. And when I do that, I'm going to see my course exactly the way a student sees it. And you'll notice that it's very similar to what you see. Some of the administrative tools are gone, and of course that gray text is gone. But it's not like the students see something totally different. It's very similar to what you see. Um, to go back to teacher view, I'm going to click on return to my normal role. And scrolling through the middle of the page, the first component we see are the pre-assessments. The pre-assessments act as a pre-test for each reporting category. So there's one pre-assessment for each reporting category. The student can take the pre-assessment, and then it says click here if your grade is less than a 70. So the student gets less than a 70 on this pre-assessment, they can click here. It jumps them directly to that reporting category that they need to work on. Again, there's one pre-assessment for each reporting category. So, um, Again, the students take these and then they can just work on that content that they need to work on where they're weak. Um, this can also be customized. If you want it to say, click here if your grade is less than an 80, or click here if your grade is less than a 60, that can certainly be customized um, for your class. A little further down, we have the practice exams. There are two online versions and one printable version. And you'll notice that the printable version is in gray. So that's not available to students, that's for teacher view only. And then a little further down, we have the scientific process skills. Um, the scientific process skills are folded into the assessors and the skill builders within your TEKS. But if you wanted your students to work on these sections independently, we have um, these set up for you. These questions are built just like the skill builders. So they're gonna give the students the option to get targeted feedback, to try a question again, and even to give up and be a solution. And continuing down a little bit further, we're back at the reporting categories, which is where we started. 
Um, one thing that you might want to do at some point in your course is edit an activity. So you might want to add or remove a question from an activity. So I'm going to scroll down to my activities and I'm going to click on an activity. This is a skill builder activity. And remember, as a teacher, whenever I click on an activity, my activity editor opens up. So when my activity editor opens up, on the left-hand side, there's a little book icon. And when I click on that book, it's going to open my library. So right now, this activity is in 5A. I'm in biology. So on the left-hand side of my library, I'm going to find biology. It's the first product here. I'm going to click on this blue arrow to drill down in biology. Again, I'm in 5A, so I'm going to come over here and find 5, and I'm going to drill down to the subchapter and even directly to the teak. And when I do that, I'll see the questions that currently appear in my activity in my library denoted with this little blue check mark. So all of these with a little blue check mark are the questions currently in my activity. So if I wanted to add a question, there's three ways I can do it. I can highlight the row of the question I want to add and drag and drop it over. I can highlight the row and then click on my little right arrow keys to move it over. Or I can just click on the little checkbox and that now that question appears at the bottom of my list of questions in my activity. To remove a question, I can highlight the row of the question, drag and drop it over. I can highlight the row of the question and click on my little left arrows. Or I can just uncheck the box of that question and it's deleted now from my activity. If you'd like to see some more information about the question before you add it, you can move this little slider bar over to the right. And when you do that, you'll see a larger view of your library. You can see some at-a-glance information about the question. Um, I can see this is labeling, this is multiple choice. Um, but I can also just double click on the row. And when I do that, the question opens up and I can read it and decide whether or not I'd like to add it to my activity. And then when I'm back in my library, I can click on this little hand and that opens my activity back up. So that's how you add or remove a question to an activity through, through your library. Another helpful thing in your course, there are, and this is new this year, we have some virtual labs in our courses now. Um, they're not in every TEEK, they're kind of sprinkled throughout your course, um, but I'm going to show you one of our virtual labs. This is a virtual lab on DNA mutations, so I'm going to open this up. And when I open up the virtual lab, I see the learning objectives and the real world application. Here I have my instructions. So for this lab, um, to change the DNA, I can make substitutions, uh, additions, and deletions. So I'm going to go ahead and, and do that. Deletion here. And then I would click on transcription, and then finally translation. So again, these are not in every TEEK. They're kind of sprinkled throughout your courses. We have them in uh, biology, chemistry, and physics. Um, they're ones that we thought were maybe harder to do in a classroom setting um, that, and, and harder to do um, on paper. Um, that we've developed so that they were kind of a fun and easy way to do it online. So that's one of our virtual labs. Also in your course, um, I'd like to look at grades now. Um, on the left hand side, there's this little A plus sign. And when you click on that icon, your grades will open up. So on this page, I can see all of the students in my class. And I can use this little slider bar at the bottom to move my students over all through their activities. And here I can see their numeric grades. 
So here's my student's name and here's their numeric grade. So I can easily see the numeric grade that my student has earned. I can also click on this link to that activity. And when I click on the link to the activity, the statistics open up for me. So remember with the skill builders questions, the students can try a question again and again, trying to get the correct answer. They're going to lose 5% of the possible score for that question for every incorrect attempt. So if the student tries the question one time and gets it correct, they'd have a solid green box. But for every time they try the question and get it wrong, but finally get it correct, that color goes from green to more and more yellow. If the student does not attempt the question, they'd have a white box. But the more times they try the question and get it wrong and never get it correct, that color goes from pink to more and more red. And if the student gives up and views the solution, they're going to have this red outline around the box. I can also hover over the question number. And when I hover over the question number, I can see some quick at-a-glance information. I can see the TEEK that this question addressed, the difficulty level, the average score, and the average number of attempts. So I can hover over each question and see that quick at-a-glance information about how my students did on that question within this activity. And then on the right-hand side, I can hover over and see how my student did on the average on this activity. Another very helpful feature from our grades book, I'm going to go back into the grade book. Again, I'll slide over to my activities that have grades. Um, so if I'm looking at my student's numeric grade and I want to know why my student earned the grade that they did, I can click on my student's numeric grade. And when I click on my student's numeric grade, I can see all of their work. I can see how my student answered the question, and I can see the feedback that he or she got. So I'm looking at question one out of five, the first question out of five. I've got two tabs here. So the first time my student tried this question, he got it incorrect. So I can see how he answered the question. I can see the feedback that he was given. And then I can see that he tried it again and got it correct. And whenever the student gets the answer correct, it also gives them the solution, saying, yes, you got it correct, and here's why. So I can go through all of the questions and see exactly how my student did and how they answered the question. This can be really helpful if you're working one-on-one -on -one with a student, trying to figure out you know, where they're getting stuck, where their mind was at when they answered this question. Um, so again, I can look at uh, the tabs, see how the question was answered, and the feedback that was given. On this one, I see my student tried the question two different times, got it incorrect two different times, and then gave up and viewed the solution. So again, they're getting zero points for that question. On this next question, we also had trouble. They tried it three different times, and then finally gave up and viewed the solution. One other option here on the right-hand side is I could reset this question for my student. If I want them to go back, review the content, and try this question again, I can reset this question. And when I do that, it clears out their grade for that question and lets them try it again. I could also reset the whole assignment for the student. Um, click on this. It'll clear out their grades for that whole assignment. I want them to go back, go through the power lesson, um, go through the presentation, review with the study sheet, and then come back to this. In that case, I might reset this whole assignment for the student. Um, but again, this is all available from um, your gradebook page. So when you're in your grades, you would just click on your um, student's numeric grade to get to that view. So again, um, so I'm looking at my grades. I just click on the numeric grade and get to that view we were just at. Another thing you can do from the Gradesbook page is click on the user report. And when you click on the user report, from this page, I can see all of the grades for all of my students. From this drop down on the right, I could select one student's grades to look at. I could select all of my students' grades to look at. Or here on the left, in our system, 
Groups are periods. So our periods, we call them groups. So if I want to look at just the grades for a, a particular period, I can use this drop-down menu to sort them that way. Go ahead and do that. So from here, I might want to export these grades. So I can click on Export. And then I've got these different formats to, to, to choose from. I'm going to uh, select Excel. And then I can leave all of these um, grade items included in my export, or I can go through and just click the ones that I want to be included. Um, at the bottom, it gives me the option to um, select all or select none. Um, so I can go in and select which grade items I want included in this export. Then I just click on Submit, and that generates a spreadsheet for me of my students' grades. Um, which I could upload to my gradebook if that's applicable, if that lets you upload Excel spreadsheets or CSVs. So those are the, the main components of the course. Um, certainly, if you have additional questions, please reach out to your Tech TA. They're more than happy to help you all throughout the year. Um, and we're so excited you're using Sapling, and, and we can't wait to help you with any of your needs, and thank you so much for using Sapling Learning.